Welcome to the Shabby at Home studio. It is such a great feeling to have you all here with us. Finally, so many plans, designing, all of the elements going into this. And it's just truly special to have I you know. here with us finally. Awesome. Yay. Yes. <laughs> and to really kick off this brand, I thought it'd be so much fun to have Jen here with us. She has seen what we are making many times, but she is going to follow along step by step with us yeah. today, just like all of you. The teacher is now the student here. Yes, I like that. <laughs> yes. How are you feeling about it all? I'm ready for that. Perfect. I am excited just to learn more about all the things you create. I've just been in awe. Every time I walk by, I'm like, don't, don't even tell me how you made that. Just show me on set so I can be genuinely surprised. Just like you're about to be amazed at her creativity. It's unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you. So with that being said, I'd like to introduce you guys to what we are making today. The very first at-home project. And this is just a stunning wreath. When oh. I designed this, I wanted to, you know, take the elements of spring and really mm -hmm. encapsulate it into something beautiful to hang outside your home for it to be hanging when all your guests arrive, warm, welcoming. Um, or really inside as well. I mean, it's so beautiful in a little yes. girl's room or um, hanging in your window. And so that is what we are making today. It is truly beautiful. Um, and for those of you who are new to Shabby Fabrics, our favorite thing to do is take one of our projects and put it into a kit. We yes. like to make it so easy for you to, you know, just have all the supplies delivered to your doorstep. We want you to just worry about getting in that creative space that we all love being creators and just your happy place, just working with your hands, creating something special for your home. So we're going to do the work for you and we're going to send it right to your doorstep. Um, included in your kit, we have our lovely felt fabric here. Um, also your wooden embroidery hoop here, which might look familiar to some people familiar with embroidery projects. Um, but this is going to be our hoop base today. Okay. I loved just the wood elements paired with the color tones here. Also, we decided to sell this beautiful pattern as an add-on for those of you that are wanting to make several different wreaths. And I know if I'll just flip through this, mm -hmm. I mean the effort, just take a quick look with our overhead camera, step by step, full color photos. Mm -hmm. I know Chase, you um, spent so much time on this pattern because our goal is that you have a wonderful experience and you just want to make again and again. Oh, yes. You know, we set aside time to create and we want to have a really positive experience. Mm -hmm. So, so much to look forward to. Yeah. And so I have been so, I can't <laughs> wait to learn how to make this. I told you before, I have a refrigerator full of wedding invites. Yes. And I like to be able to give a heartfelt mm -hmm. handmade treasure Yes. And I feel like this is in that category. Oh, for sure. Or a housewarming gift, yes. you know, bring yes. it over to someone's new home. You know, what a better way than something made special by you, from yep. you. Everyone will love it. Yeah. So with that being said, shall we get started? Yes, I'm anxious to <laughs> let me know how I can help. Otherwise, I'm going to watch this and I am going to make that <laughs> with one of those kits you just talked about. <laughs> Perfect. So um, some additional you know, products that are required are the hot glue gun um, and also scissors. Okay. Um, something special about this hot glue gun is it has a fine tip here. Um, and that is really a crucial element when mm. making some of the floral that we have here, just because it really just takes a small amount of glue to then fold the petals that we're using. Um, and then also some scissors. We like the Karen K. Buckley scissors because it just gives a perfect cut okay. each time. Perfect for some of those small grooves you'll be making. Um, and so also included with the required ones, we recommend... Um, these acrylic templates that we have designed to truly make it the easiest way possible to make some of the things that we'll be making today. Um, I'll explain in more detail, you know, some of these products as we go. Okay. Um, but those are the two that are required, the hot glue gun and the scissors. Okay. Um, so moving along, we are going to start by making our cream flowers. Um, and so as you can see here, we have... Um, two smaller flowers and one medium-sized flower there with medium petals. Okay. Um, and we are going to start making them by grabbing um, your template here. 
There's also another way to make these petals is by using our freezer paper um, templates here, which we have provided the stencil for you to use. Jen is going to use that method since she's more familiar with the freezer paper layout. Um, for maybe if you have it at home, you can just use and trace. Um, so she's going to show us that way. And I am going to use our petal templates here and just trace it onto our felt and make our medium and small size petals. Mm, so quick and efficient to do that. So Oh, yes. Basically, you could, in the pattern, this is included. Mm -hmm. um, thanks for giving them that option as well. You know, yes. we never want to, even with quilting patterns, we like to provide options for you. And certainly templates make mm -hmm. things a lot more efficient. You can jump into the fun a little bit quicker. We certainly can use the freezer paper to make our own uh, templates, as mm -hmm. we're saying. It's nice, sturdy. If you can see that from the overhead camera, there's a shine to that. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you can create your own, this would be instead of the acrylic templates. Yes. It is certainly a lot more effort to do it, but it is possible. As we lay this with the shiny side down, and we're using the medium one. We are going to start with our six small petals. Okay. Um, Jen will start making those. And I'm going to use the templates for six small petals and then seven medium petals. Um, to make all of our cream petals here. Oh, okay. um, I have designed these templates specifically to be in the perfect shape to make many different flowers. Um, it all just comes down to your folding technique, but this is our tried and true, easiest way possible. Um, these are smaller, so they're easy to just keep by on hand. Um, and the thing that I also really love about these is that over time, as you're continually tracing these petals, um, they kind of begin to warp a little bit on the sides. This is gonna hold the shape um, and just make it super easy to create the best shape possible. So I will show you how to use these as Jen is over there tracing um, with her shiny side down. This she is, is a lot tracing. of work so yeah. far. <laughs> I want that, but yes. I'll keep going. And we are also using our Frickson pens here. Um, these are super great because as you're tracing, which is just super simple following around the template. Um, but as you're tracing, let's say that you go off course a little bit, you can easily just take it and iron it away. So oh. it clears all of your marks that you don't want there. So yeah. I'm gonna just continue to trace around here. How's it going over there? Well, you're a little ahead of me. <laughs> And, and I know it's historically when I've made templates uh, from freezer paper and it's a temporary adhesive, you're ironing it on and lifting it off. It's not like a fusible webbing that is a permanent bond. You generally will get, at least with fabric, mm -hmm. um, maybe seven, maybe eight applications. I know when I did, tr uh, I have used this before with felt with another project, when I lifted it off, Mm -hmm. I could tell I wasn't going to get maybe that eight and mm -hmm. it kind of left a little bit of residue. It kind of almost pulled up on the felt. Right. So we'll see how that goes. If mm -hmm. I Should I iron these down to that? Yes. And when you do iron them, we want to be sure that you're using a medium heat setting and just really doing it as lightly as possible. Like Jen explained, it can kind of leave some residue of felt on the freezer paper templates. Um, and we don't want it causing any distortion to the felt itself. Um, we don't want a bunch of, you know, that fuzzy looking on top of your felt. We want the petals to stay in its true shape. Um, and like I said, with these stencils here, that won't cause that disruption to the fabric. Um, so this is also another way why this, the yeah. templates itself are a great addition to just add on. Make it easy for yourself. Um, I know if you have it laying around, the freezer paper is great to use, but this is the recommended way for a few different reasons. Um, and so as I'm tracing along, each flower will have six of these small petals here. Um, and I already traced it on here as well to just show you guys quicker for video purposes. So you're gonna have six petals for each small flower, a total of 12 mm. small petals and then seven medium petals for your medium flower. Okay. So as you can see by the time yeah. I traced a few already, <laughs> Jen is still hey, over there cutting. Give me a chance. Ironing. <laughs> um, so as she's doing that, 
I will show you how I like to cut these out. Um, so like I said, we're using the Karen K. Buckley scissors here. Um, and that's gonna really help get into these smaller grooves here and just really follow along the petal um, beautifully. So I like to cut a little bit in the inside of these petals here. Um, don't worry too much if it's not the exact shape because you know every flower is different. Mm, that's true. what gives it a little bit of character. That's true. Gives it a little bit of life. And if you end up going, you know, where you can still see the line a little bit, um, that's okay because we use our friction pen here and we can iron it right away. It will disappear. Um, so no, you know, worries when you are cutting these out. Um, so Jen is over there still tracing. <laughs> I was like, should I cut around that shape without not thinking, I know I'm going to cut into the shape. Yes. Then I'm making more templates mm -hmm. again. Quick question. I yes. see that they've got um, kind of the petal shape mm -hmm. and then we've got the leaf shape. Yep. Different, two different sets. Yep. So two different sets. Okay. Our leaves will be used later down the line in our pattern to make our leaves that you see here, this beautiful sage color. Um, and then there's three different size of the petals. Like I said, these three petal shapes are truly amazing because we can get so many different flowers out of this one shape. This, all of these flowers you see here were used with this one template. Oh they truly have so many functions to them. Um, and so as we are working away at these. Um, so you can see I have one here that took a lot less time. Jen's over there cutting hers around. And Jen, I think I'm gonna save you from over there using their templates and for video video purposes. We're gonna, we're gonna move along there. And we can set that aside. So okay. this is an option. We've equip equipped you with everything that you will need to make these templates, but really just make it easy on yourself and get the acrylic templates that we've made oh my gosh. for you here. Make it easy. Look, look at that kind of... And it kind of leaves a fuzz there, like we were saying. Um, so you very well can make it, but you can see... Yeah. It really is just much easier. So thank you for saying. I think I won that. the race there, Jen. I think you did. <laughs> I think you I did. Won. And I think I, do. Do you anticipate? Maybe I'm kind of giving you guys a sneak preview, giving <laughs> us a sneak preview. Do you anticipate more projects in the future with these templates? Oh yes. Oh, okay. Yes. So because if we invested it. You're going to reward us with some more projects. It will be okay. well worth it. I won't give it totally away, <laughs> but I do see more projects down the line using these templates because they really are just so handy, oh, yeah. easy to use, um, and they're just perfect for a multitude of projects. So we okay. will set your templates aside Thank here. Thank you. Bless you. Uh, <laughs> me. And we're going to move along. So like I said, you have your 12 small petals to make your small cream flowers. You also have your medium petals to make your medium flower here. So we have a small and we have our medium. And I'm just setting these here to show us um, kind of just the shape, the overlay of them so we can be ready. Um, you're going to gather all of your cream petals and you're going to start by, I will give you these two to start with, but imagine we have all of our petals and we're going to start by forming the shape of these. Um, so what we're going to do is we will start with our small petals. Whoops, we got some hang in there. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to place just a dot of glue. There, there we, go. we go. I see we've protected our work surface. Yes, like yes, a parchment that is key. Paper. We learned there, a parchment paper is yeah. perfect to lay down. Sure. Protect your area. It helps with this glue that will bubble up here. I'll be able to, once it dries, just kind of flick it aside, yeah. no problem. Um, and so we're taking the small dot, like I said, with this fine tip hot glue gun that makes it just super precise and easy for us. And what we're going to do is we're going to simply just pinch the bottom of the petal here. Okay. We're going to hold it for just a few seconds until the glue sets. And you can already see just by that simple folding and pinching there, yeah. we've created a small petal. So <laughs> hot glue is like this immediate satisfaction. It is, it is. And so I'll have you do that with your oh petals my gosh. here. I wasn't expecting this. Okay. I'm literally going to get to do this. You're you're getting to it. Right. How far up from the bottom? I'll show you one more time with this petal here. So we're gonna do it, you know, 
pretty close by, but enough so the glue can, you know, ooze down to the bottom a little bit if it needs to. Okay. Just the base there. And then we're going to take our petal and we're going to just simply pinch it. Okay. So just the base here. Right. Right at the bottom. Makes this little scoop. A little scoop. Yep. Okay. And we're just going to hold it for a little bit. It really doesn't take much time. And now we have our petal. Okay. So we got two there. I'll have you do your one more petal. Show one more time how we're doing it. Just at. I remember this about glue. It yes. gets this string yes. going. I'm like, where did that come Once from? it dries, um, we can kind of evaluate what we got going on here and just pull the string to make sure that it doesn't stick to any of our petals and just pinching there at the base. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. You have your two small <laughs> petals. So you're going to repeat that there for all of your cream petals, all of your 12 oh. small ones and all medium ones. All, okay, all small and medium. Yes, gotcha. for video's sake, we don't need to show that motion over and over again. Right. So we've already set those aside here. And you're going to then grab your six small petals and we're going to make one of our small flowers. So we have six total here. Um, and then what we're also going to do is we're going to make our flower center. So how we're going to do that is you're going to take your nutmeg felt and we um, cut it into three strips that are a half inch by four inches. And you get your strip here um, and this is going to make our flower center. So now I'm gonna show you, oh my we're gosh. gonna grab our scissors. I was not expecting this. <laughs> I knew I had that set of stuff, but I thought that was just for- you it, <laughs> Nope, Jen, you're, go you're diving right in. We're oh, doing it. <laughs> this was not planned, but I'm, I'm game. Here we are. Already. <laughs> so to make our flower center, we're gonna take our scissors and you're going to make slits about a half inch apart, going halfway down the slit. I'll show you here. So we're going halfway, about a half inch apart, all the way down the length of the strip. And about halfway about across. About halfway. You don't want to cut too close to your strip because it is going to have glue. Um, and it doesn't have to be exact. Like I said, every flower is different. But we're just going to create kind of these slits here for our flower center using our nutmeg felt. Oh, I have to make a decision. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 let's do them a little bit closer together and we'll little, make a little bit of depth. Okay, it'll into, make it a little better. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, quilters use a quarter inch seam allowance, not a half. <laughs> I'm not so averse on the No, nope, no, nope, we're doing half. Okay. <laughs> All right, so once we have kind of our strip here that has the little slits in it, we're going to then grab our glue again. Okay. And we're going to form what you can see here, this nutmeg flower center. As you can also see in the cream flowers it's so here. It's so pretty. It's amazing how much texture. Isn't it it's crazy? Just, oh, okay. Yes. All right. Okay. All right. So now we're going to take our hot glue gun again and I'll show you first. We're going to apply glue all the way across one end here. Just a small amount. Um, We'll take that edge of the hot glue. And then what we're going to do is we're going to begin rolling this strip here. Oh. And as we roll going down the line, we'll periodically apply more glue just to hold it nice and tight. Just need a thin layer. Okay, so kind of glue as you go. Yep, just to hold it down. Perfect. And then start rolling. Roll a little Not bit. Not folding, but rolling, right? Rolling. We want it to give it a little bit of a round shape there for our flower center. So when you put the next glue on, just a little distance. Just a little bit. Because it's going to dry quickly. Mm -hmm. Yep, short amount so it doesn't dry before you get there, but enough to hold <laughs> yeah. it in place. So if the doorbell rings, baby cries, you're, you're like, yes. I got to go right yep. now. You got to roll quick. Right now. <laughs> All right, and as we near the end here, we're going to place glue going all the way across the rest of our strip. Okay. To be able to finish the roll here and just hold it into place. And I've got a marking pen for you, that one. <laughs> <laughs> that one. That oh, happens, right. I'll tell we'll you what, okay. <laughs> I am the messiest quilter, Chase. <laughs> I go to quilt retreats and people are like, um, I never want to sit next to her again. <laughs> just I, throwing I things just out. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's not honorable. <laughs> you know, it's never a large enough table. Nope. You always just need nope. more and more space. <laughs> and every time I'm like, I'm going to stay more organized this time. Nope. No, I don't. Mm -mm. Nope, Messy not the plan. The crafter. project matters more, huh? Okay. So as you can see, we've just created a little center. Yeah. We have some texture here with yeah. it. Got a little fluff, and we're just going to hold that until it dries. Okay. Um, and you're going to do that with all three of your strips. Okay, so now that we have our nutmeg flower centers here, we're going to start building our small cream flower. Um, so we pinched together all of our petals as well, um, like you showed, and we're going to take that center and we're going to glue our petals onto the center. So let me show you with a few of my petals how you apply the glue, um, and then we can start making yours. So. <laughs> What we're going to do here, let me move this aside, is we are going to apply the glue on the edge here. Oh. Just a small little dab will do you there. If you can kind of circle around, it helps with the hot glue strings there. And once you have it in that space, you can then press it on to this nutmeg center here. Oh. Um, don't worry too much about where onto the center we're placing it. Um, it's really just you want to get, oh, I got a little dot there. Um, you want to get it directly onto the center of the flower with the glue. So I'll show you one more time. Hey, that glue, I, I know. it happens. But see, no matter. with this parchment paper, we can just yep. flick it away there. There you go. Um, so we'll take our glue gun again, and we're going to apply just a small amount of glue to the edge of the petal. And then again, just applying it directly onto the center. I'm going to overlap this petal a little bit mm. just to give it some dimension as we yeah. go around. Oh, it's so pretty already. And continue attaching. Oh my gosh, yes. I love that ruffle and the overlap. Mm -hmm. and, and it reminds me of magnolia flowers, these yes, ones here. Just the does. beautiful cream colors mixed with that nutmeg there. It's truly really beautiful. So let's try a few of yours there. You're going to apply the glue again on this strip. Okay. Perfect. And then you're going to hold your petal and just place it onto your center. I kind of lined up the bottoms. Um, is that That's okay. Is that important? Um, you or, know, or it where? really can be placed anywhere on this nutmeg center. It it gives it kind of some depth. <laughs> Sorry, you're, you're all I remember tied this. up there. <laughs> That's why. It will get easier as you go along. You'll get the hang of your glue motion and how much you press. Yeah. Um, okay. And so, it, yeah, like I said there, it doesn't quite matter where on that nutmeg center. Okay. Um, as long as it's just going on there vertically. And that that overlap. Mm -hmm. Just slightly. There you go. About like that. Yep, and just press and hold. I think I'm now attached to the center of my flower. Oh, no. <laughs> I might have glued Fingers myself. not included with your small flower. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm a better quilter. <laughs> but I am already having a lot of fun. It's it's you know what you know what too I realized with with quilting I should I should be quiet. Do we just keep going around? Yes, okay. all the way around. You know with quilting, you know it's such an amazing thing to create a quilt. But I love other crafts too. I mean the cross stitch, the hand embroidery, glue glue projects, felt projects, and this is. I love that felt. There's no fraying edge. Mm -hmm. You can jump right into it. And it just gives it so much texture and flexibility to really shape it into anything. Yep, perfect. Just vertically on there and just a little bit overlapped. Oh, this is fun. There you are. And just continue. We're going to do this with all six of our petals. Okay. And, you know, I, I love that the supplies needed to jump into a project like this are really quite minimal. It is. It is. You know, when you do think about some of the other crafts um, out there, um, it, there's a lot more involved to, to be successful at that craft. Yes. A lot more, you know, skills and learning how to use each tool that you need. And it can get pricey. And yeah. so we really just broke it down to the basics of what you will need to create something so beautiful, so much dimension, texture, um, just so many different elements, but P 
piecing it all together and delivered right to you in one quick hit. Well, it's I love that. I love kits. Mm -hmm. You know, when I bought in the early days, I would always get patterns and kits weren't as available for things. And then you're out trying to find it and they're trying to find your own colors. Yep. And you don't really know what it's going to look like. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> and you're, you're hoping. You're hoping that what you gathered is going to look similar to what you pictured. Yeah. Um, but as you can see here, as I continue to place the petals just along the center, slightly overlapping, pressing it on vertically, you get this beautiful, small, oh. magnolia looking cream flower. Yours is so much better. And you know what I realized? What's it's that, that it's that I should have popped that center up. You see how yours is more in the middle mm -hmm. and mine's like buried down there. That's why you're the professional and the teacher <laughs> and I'm the student. Well, and you know, you have two different flowers. And so if you feel like you'd like to try something a little bit different, you can make another flower. And you know what? we always love to do is we supply you with a multitude of fabric for oh. you to be able to, you know, play around with it, mix it up. Maybe you want to do four cream flowers instead of the three here. Ooh. We have enough material for you to really customize it, make it your own. Okay. Um, so maybe you try again with a flower with the material we have and I really like just begin to customize and give it its own look. But you did great. You created your small <laughs> flower, it looks just like it. And this will make now we have our three cream flowers for our wreath. Um, so now that we have our cream ones, we're going to move on to these burgundy flowers here, um, which I just love. I, I, they give kind of like a um, you vintage look. Um, and again, oh, wow. it's crazy that this one template made the same exact flower. It's just different folding techniques that we're going to teach you. Wow. So we're going to set our cream flowers aside. Now that you have your three, your two small and one medium, and we're just going to set them aside here until we assemble our wreath. Okay. Um, the next step here is our burgundy flowers, and we're going to, for video purposes, fast forward a little bit because it is repeating um, the same steps that we did with our cream flowers is tracing your burgundy petals. You're going to do five large, 11 medium, and nine small. You're okay. going to trace them out with your templates onto your burgundy felt. Um, you're going to cut them all out, and then you're going to pinch all of your burgundy petals just like we did with our cream flowers. Okay. So now that we have pinched all of our petals, um, we're going to go one step further with our larger petals here with all of our large and medium petals. We're going to, as you can see, they're already pinched like we did. We're going to do just one step further. Um, and this one can be a little bit more in depth, but once you get the hang of it, it's easy. You have more than enough material available to practice. Um, and what we're going to do is you can hold it by your pinched end that you already did. And we're going to place a dot of glue right on the side there. Kind of where the pinch of the flower and the petal begin to fray up there um, is where your dot of glue is going to go. Once you have your dot of glue, you're going to take one side of your petal and you're going to fold it downward into your hot mm. glue there. It opens this thing up. It does. It opens it up a little bit, gives it more dimension. Um, and it really is just, you know, one fold down. So once you have this one side, you're going to turn your petal to the other side and again, flip it over and place a dot of glue on the side there and then fold the other side down into your glue. Oh, wow. It creates um, a little bit of an accordion shape um, and then you're going to hold it, let your glue set for just a moment. And then what you're going to do to really add just some extra dimension to this petal is you're going to take both of your sides and you're going to pull it forward and kind of create, a, you know, a scoop shape, more of yeah, a scoop. Yeah, it is more like yeah. a shovel. Yep, just more of those edges there rounded and it just gives the flower more depth and shape to it. So. We're Amazing. going to have you try with one oh of these large petals gosh. here. We'll do it at the okay. same time. Okay. So you have your medium and large petals that you're going to do this with. Okay. And we're going to turn it to its side. Just like that. Perfect. And we're going to put a dot of glue 
right on its side there. Kind of right where that opening, yep. on the back side of that opening. Yep, directly below there. Oh, I think I did too much. Is that enough? That's okay, yep, that's the perfect okay. amount. And we're going to then take your petal uh -huh. and fold it downwards into the glue and hold it to set. Got it. Perfect. This is, that's very, okay. Uh-huh. All right. Just little small folds can make a big very difference achievable. in the shape of these. Okay. Um, and then we're going to flip it over again, okay. other side, and place a dot of glue. Boy, it doesn't take much. I can see why this tip oh, yes. is so important. I because, can't explain oh. enough how important it is to get a glue gun with that fine tip. Yeah, to control the flow. Yes. Otherwise, because I think most glue guns kind of have the end where that kind mm -hmm. of ends. Yep, it's that gold tip there that really just gives the perfect amount of glue that you're going to need for these petals. A glue gun without it, might the glue might go a little bit more all over the petal, and it's going to be a lot harder for you to give it that fine, detailed shape that we want okay. with these petals. Um, so once we have it there, we're then going to take the sides of our petals and scoop it forward. So there you are. Wow. And we created a little scoop. <laughs> which we will use later. So I like we'll, that. We'll put these aside okay. here. And I'm actually going to do it one more time quickly just to show you. It's good you. to watch it in real time, yes. kind of just the flow of it. Mm -hmm. And I think if you do have a regular glue gun at home, I'd just be, you know, just be light-handed, I guess, Really, with the glue. really light. Okay. Um, and less just is make sure more. less is more, that is for sure. Okay. And, you know, it is going to just make it, especially with that bigger tip, is going to make it more obvious that there is glue in place as opposed to being okay. able to hide the glue easier. So then we create our little sh scoop there, and we're going to set it aside. Okay. Once you've done that with all of your medium and large petals set aside for later, and we're going to begin forming the middle center of our burgundy flowers. So just like we did as well with our nutmeg centers, you're going to repeat that same step with your gold centers for these burgundy flowers. Um, and once we're gonna, we're gonna take those and we're gonna make the base. So this base requires your three small petals, total of nine small petals. All of those, you're gonna mm. grab them. From those nine small petals, you're going to make three flower bases, as you can see here. So we're gonna gather all your small, and we're going to apply, here's your three petals here. Okay. We're going to apply our three petals a little bit differently than we did with our cream flowers. So instead of placing the glue directly onto here like we did with the cream, we're going to apply a line almost of glue in the center of this flower here, in the little scoop part. Mm. And instead of placing it directly into your center, we're going to kind of nest, is what we like to call this motion here. We're going to nest the little center into the petal. And this is gonna just kind of hug around it. Oh, okay. My petal's gonna <laughs> hug the center. I like that idea. <laughs> yes. I like that. That's so nice, again, a, a nice thin term. line. Is that enough? Yep. And then we're gonna give it a hug. You're gonna just nest it right in there. Perfect. And then you're gonna kinda just squeeze it squeeze around. Squeeze it around. Okay. And we'll do that again. And we're repeating this for three small petals into one gold center. Okay, so a little overlap again. Slightly. Okay. This one is much, much slighter than our cream flowers. And again, just kinda nestled in there. That much of a overlap or yep. a little bit? Oh man, my glue is everywhere. <laughs> Even when you have it control. Lots of control, just a tiny amount of glue. And then again in the center and nestle it in there. So slightly overlapping as you can see, but really we wanna just cover that little center and create our little base for our burgundy flowers. Okay. Great job. Thank you. It looks great. Oh, I'm having fun. <laughs> I might have that wreath done faster than I thought. <laughs> 
And so once we have made three of these bases, we're going to set them aside for just a moment. And we're gonna start building our small, medium, and large burgundy flower. There's three of these. Um, we're using the same technique each time. Whoa, hang on to your oh, glue yeah. in there. Oh yeah, oh <laughs> yeah. Again, your glue, guys. make sure you have um, your <laughs> parchment paper in place. And as you can see, it's nice to just be able to push all of your glue mm -hmm. aside there. Um, so now that we have our bases, what we're going to do is we're going to start applying additional petals to make um, our larger ones here. So I'll show you again, you're gonna grab one of your bases that we just made and we're going to do the same technique with your larger flowers. And I'm creating our small burgundy flower. So we're applying glue into the scoop and we are then placing it around our base that we just made. Same nesting, slightly above those petals, mm. but really just the same technique. And these are made with the medium petals that we had done that additional that shaping with to give it a scoop and more of a rounded you know, design to it. So again, in the scoop there, around our base and just overlapping and then nestled in. Oh, it's so pretty. And then we'll third petal here for our small burgundy petals. Okay, so just three. Yep. Three on For this our step. small burgundy flower is our three small petals that we already made for our base. Okay. And then we're applying three medium um, scoop petals, okay. I guess. <laughs> just nestled in as well and just kind of hugging your base that you already made. And so there you have it, your small burgundy flower that will then be displayed on your wreath. Um, so Jen, I'm gonna oh. have you do the same technique that I did, and okay. you're gonna do it with your five medium petals around your base that you made. So oh. this is our medium flower that Jen is making, her three oh. small petals with her base, and then her five medium petals nestled around it to create her medium burgundy flower. So with this chase, is this because it's medium? Um, can you show me? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> because I know yep. I, I want it to be bigger. Uh huh. Uh, and how do we get it there? So A the rounds? giving it more. Um, one, it's more petals itself surrounding it, and so you're taking your medium five petals, and again you're doing it in the scoop here. I'll let you do this one because I want them to learn from the pro. Perfect, I got it. <laughs> I think it's better that way. And then, you know, a little bit over it. Um, we'll do it slightly overlapping, but these ones, it has that nice round shape. And so it's going to give it a little bit more poof to it to appear as a bigger flower. Here, I'll, I'll help. I'll Perfect, teamwork. <laughs> well, I'll glue, you do it. <laughs> and so that's just overlapping a little bit. Is it working? Yep. Yeah. I mean, this is very organic, guys. And then as you're going along, kind of take the time to squeeze them together. Give it a nice little hug around your base. And you're just continuing to place those medium petals. And there we go. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. And now, like you said, it's amazing that this flower and this mm -hmm. flower was made from the same template. Isn't it? It's I know. It's just that extra... Just that extra little fold in the placement of the glue that makes it just a completely different flower. So now Amazing. you will have your small burgundy flower, your okay. medium flower, and we're going to add the additional petals to make a large flower. So for the large flower, it's repeating the same steps that you did with your small flower, with the base that we made with the three small petals, your three medium petals, mm -hmm. and now I am going to add our five large petals. Okay. So I'm going to take the large ones that we made, place it in the scoop part again, same technique, and it's gonna go directly over, just building upon the layers of petals that we've made. Sure, just to fill it out more I'll be your glue assistant. Perfect. So I'll have you take those there okay. and place it in the middle. Okay. And then overlapping and slightly above as we're going along here. Overlapping and above and squeezing together. 
and you can see it's starting to make a oh, bigger so pretty. flower with just more depth to it. I love the color too. Yes, I love this burgundy color. It's so rich, but it just screams. Look at that. There we go. It's beautiful. And so now you have your three flowers here. We have a small one, medium one, and large one. So same technique each awesome. time, just adding more petals to each flower. And then you end up with your three burgundy um, along with our cream ones that we've already made. Okay. So we're going to set these ones aside. Jen, I'm actually going to give these to you. These are going to be your three burgundy. Yes. And <laughs> I'll take them. I'll take them. And I will take these ones here as well. So now we have our burgundy flowers, our cream flowers, and we're going to start the process of building our pink flowers that you see here. Um, so set all of those aside and let's start by making these. Again, for video purposes, um, we are repeating our steps that we already did with both our cream okay. and our burgundy flowers. So uh, just a brief overview of it. You're going to take your small template here, once again, so amazing that you can just form all these different buy flowers the with one of these. I'll just buy it. Make it easy. I promise you. Um, and you're going to use your light pink felt and you're going to trace 24 small petals onto your felt. Cut those out. And then a glue, um, we'll show you how to glue these a little bit differently than we did with our cream and our burgundy flowers. So you can see here we have our 24 small petals. And we're going to first start by taking... Our petals here, Jen, here's two for you. Okay. And I'm gonna show you how to glue these and fold them a little bit differently. So you're gonna take your petal and you're actually going to apply just a straight line along the base of this petal. Okay. Once you have your straight line of glue, which again, just a small precise amount, you're going to then just take the edge and roll oh. this petal here. That's what gives it this beautiful and it flute. Gives, yeah. uh -huh. Oh, it's so beautiful. I mean, just look at this. I just think this is just so amazing. Yes, they're oh. very like delicate, yes. light pink flowers. Um, these ones are probably my favorites after, I don't know, it's a toss up between uh, the cream and I love the, them all. Yes. If it's creating and there's glue, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good day. So again, just a line there like Jen did. And she's just rolling trying to the base <laughs> of her petal. This one's a very just delicate motion. You can kind of use that other thumb here if that's easier than rolling to kind of yeah. just bring them. Perfect. Oh, it's Look so at that. pretty. So you cut out a total of 24 small of these light pink petals. Then you're going to take eight of these and gather them together once you've rolled them into its little shape there. Little, little roll. roll. So pretty. And it's pink. Uh, <laughs> it's it's pink. Just, who doesn't love that light, <laughs> almost vintage-y yep. pink it's here? Like this dusty pink. Dusty, yes. It's such perfect, a classic. Perfect color. Okay. All right, so then you're gonna do those to you know, all 24, but then you're gonna gather eight of them. So we have our eight here. Okay. There's your eight there. Okay. And you're going to create um, three bunches of eight. So we'll oh. start with one of our eight petals and we're going to apply glue just directly at the base here. Okay. Once we have that on the base, we're gonna take one more of our small petals and we're going to lay it slightly to the right here and just directly on top of that glue we just laid down. Mm. That whole stem, mm -hmm. the whole thing. Yep, apply it there, grab one more of your petals and then slightly to the right and directly on top, perfect. And just hold into place. Ooh. I'm glued to it again. <laughs> That's okay. I must have just burned all my fingertips off um, there. I should it be the same height or staggered a down? A little bit lower. Let me change Close that. Close to the same height, but just okay. slightly below. Let me do that again. Because I'm noticing this mm -hmm. kind of descent. It's slightly to the right and then a little bit below, mm -hmm. but then right on top of that glue. You still want it perfect. Yep. About like that? Mm -hmm. Yep. That looks great. Okay. All right, and then we're gonna grab our next petal 
and first apply then glue to that base that we just created there. Okay. And our next petal, same thing, but this time slightly to the left and down below right. that one. Got it. Slightly left and below and right on top. So it's kind of this trailing, it's this yep, kind exactly. of this descending. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is so pretty already. Oh my gosh. So simple, but really makes a beautiful light pink flower. Um, and then you're just gonna continue that process for all eight of your petals. So again, oops, we're gonna grab your little three that you made here. Oh, I got ahead of myself. Oh, you already did it, perfect. Did I, am, it I, am I left, right, left, right? Yep, exactly. Left, right, left, right. Slightly downwards to I'm the right all, now. See, I'm getting Look, you're getting the hang of it. I'm already Look getting you. <laughs> you're a pro now. <laughs> and we're just going to continue down with all eight and create a little bunch. Whoop. Oops. The glue gun's flying here everywhere. Glue gun down. You know, you can. It's nice to have the base so your glue just directly goes over. If you have a nice supply there, you can't, or nice um, parchment paper or something down, you can set it down. But I like to collect my glue in just one place there. Yeah, I think, and I'm, mm -hmm. I've got my little glue strings going. <laughs> That's okay. It's part of the process. You'll be able to clean it all up. Yeah. At the very end here. The nice part about that glue is it's tricky as we're building upon it, but you really can just, you know, clean it up very easily. Oops, I made a mistake there with that one. So we'll let that dry for a second. Oh, what happened with that one? I accidentally put, which is perfectly fine since we're going to build upon, but I put glue on this base instead of our our bunch. Oh. And so one more time, I'm going to now do it to the bunch. Okay. And then now layer the petal on top. Like you said, <laughs> I know the kit has, you know, plenty. Mm -hmm. so, oh, yes. Yeah, so if you so, make a mistake, mm -hmm. you need to recut. Or if you want to make it completely make, differently. Yeah. If you want to make these bigger than what we're showing you, use maybe your medium flower templates instead of your small ones. That is perfectly fine. This wreath, when I designed it, I really wanted to keep in mind that make it your own and customize it. Um, I did that one more time. I'm gonna glue to the bunch and then set. I know it's hard to teach. Petals. It's hard to teach and, talk and, and do. Teach. I know it happens to me. Well, they've seen this. I, I seem to be talking, and then the next thing I know, I sew something wrong, and I'm grabbing for the seam ripper. I wonder why that's one of our best-selling notions. Yep. Probably because I use yep. it constantly. Right? <laughs> We're like, oh gosh. So then we have our eight That's for so our bunch here. Pretty. And you're going to repeat that pot process three times to create your three bunches. Oh my gosh. So we have those there. That is so pretty. And there we are. It's just the kind of descent. It's uh -huh. delicate. Just trails and... down and it creates just a beautiful little bunch oh there. Oh my so gosh, I love it. Now that we have our light pink ones, we can again set these aside and you've made it. You've made all of your three different flowers here with that's Marie. amazing <laughs> all right so fun so fun so now the last part of this is adding in the lovely greenery that we have here um so we're going to add i've already pre-cut some of these to make it easy for us oh. um in your pattern yeah. it's going to include a little bit of a layout of what's the best way, since there are a lot of leaves for you to cut out and piece together, the best way to cut this and to arrange it oh. onto, move this that way. Gotcha. So you can see in your pattern has the alignment for you to maximize the use of your felt. We've given you extra felt for you to really add in as many petals as you'd like. I used about a sheet and a half of felt but really you can make it your own. If you'd like less greenery, perfect for you to do so. Um, add more. If you wanna go all the way around the hoop with the green, oh, wow. go right ahead. And so you can see we have our small, um, medium, large, and extra large laid out on here. Um, and once you have them all traced with your templates, again, you can see because you're making so many, it is just so handy to just take these templates oh, and easily place them yes. like this. Just makes it much easier on yourself. Um, really quickly, because there are so many of these leaves, I want to show you kind of a little bit of a technique I use while cutting these oh. out to um, get them kind of all at once. I will say 
you have more air to not make them as perfectly cut when you do it this way. But if you're someone who just wants to get it done, yep. this is the best way. You can go back around it and make them more perfect. But we're going to kind of just take a section here. And this is, I believe, our large petals. And we're going to just cut that whole group of them out. Let's see, which one is this one? This is our extra large, and those down there, I think, are the large. Yes, yep. large. And so then once you have your grouping, you're going to still cut out the points. And that's why it is nice to trace it onto the felt so you can see where you are cutting, making sure you're not cutting into your leaf. And you're going to kind of just keep the points there and cut them out diagonally. Diagonally. I can't say that word very well today. <laughs> And make a zigzag through all of them. Oh. So that way you can cut them out one by one. Um, that's how I do it, just to make sure that I'm following the lines perfectly. But this is just an option to kind of do more at one time. So now that we have our leaves cut out there, yeah. what I do is I grab my large template or medium or, or small, whatever you're grouping at the time, and you're going to fold it kind of accordion style. Um, and I like to use this template here as kind of a base when I'm folding it to make sure that I'm covering enough or that I'm grabbing enough fabric to cut. Oh the my side gosh. No and we're going to do just an accordion type fold back and forth, back and forth, lining up our points so we know that they're all in the right place. Oh. And we're going to hold our template in place there. That's amazing. So if you do that, you almost don't need to trace around them, do you? I like to still trace around it because then I can make sure that I'm still cutting around it. And when I uh, cut I out, I can then trim it, it easier. So okay. I do still recommend tracing with the templates, leaving them on here. You can see where you're cutting and you can make sure you're not cutting your point out. Okay. Um, and then you can take your scissors here. You can hold it. You can leave it if you'd like. And you're just going to cut all the way around these leaves. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Boy, that's where these scissors shine. Oh, these scissors you come in handy. You couldn't do that with a lot of scissors. No, these are great scissors for this. Yes. It gives you the precise detail that you need, but it cuts through this felt fabric like butter. It's just so yes. smooth. Yes, if you're using a different pair of scissors at home, um, I often use Kai's on mm -hmm. set. I might be able to get through two layers of that, but I would not attempt that because I wouldn't want to have a less than perfect edge. Right. Because are, I notice I love that about your wreath. Like there's no fuzziness. It's so cleanly cut. Did you use the Karen K's when you did this? I did. I used all the okay. Karen K's. They're comfortable. They're easy to use. They're sharp. It really is. They're, they live up to their name of yeah, the perfect scissors. Yeah. They are perfect. So as you can see, as I cut it out there, it made multiple of these leaves. So you're saving cutting oh. time, but you do run the risk a little bit of you know, not getting right on there. So now that I have this one that you can see wasn't quite perfect, I can then take my scissors and go around it just sure. like that. And that's why I like to leave yeah. the trace mark on there. So once you have them all cut out, I recommend you organize them by, you know, sizing. So that way it's easy to grab when you're assembling your wreath later. Okay. Um, you can kind of see what you're working with. Um, but you're just gonna continue for groups of those, cut them out. And you're going to get your large, um, your large pile of leaves there to grab from. Um, so we're going to take these. Actually, I set these ones aside here. And I'm going to show you once they're all cut, set aside, how to fold the leaves. Super easy. Um, we'll take our large leaves here. And all we're going to do is place a dot in the center here and fold at the base. Oh, this is kind pitch. of like the other one. Just like it. That's like the our first flower. Uh-huh. Yep, our cream. I did too much glue there. I got glue happy. That's okay. Okay. I got very glue happy. <laughs> <laughs> and there you are. You're just going to hold it for a little bit till it sets. Set it aside. Okay. We can do one more with these small ones here. Less glue. Okay. Less glue. Again, that precision precision glue gun is going to be your best friend, oh, I yeah. promise you. And then pinch. And you're going to continue to do this, like I said, for as many as you'd like. 
Last one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with this one. <laughs> as many as you'd like, based on your fullness, I added this step at the end because I thought it was important for you to see how many flowers you made, mm -hmm. how big they are, what you wanted to add, and then from there, begin to cut your leaves. If you'd like to start applying the wreath or the flowers to the wreath first and then go back and cut more if you feel like, ah. definitely possible. So now that we have our leaves, our flowers, we're going to start assembling our wreath here. Oh my gosh. The final the, step. The fun, I mean, this has been fun all along, but now you get to see. See it all come to life. And it really is beautiful seeing all of these elements added together. They pair so beautifully. Um, all the different textures, dimensions. I just love seeing it all come together. Yeah. So I start with my wreath um, or hoop wreath here with the little clasp at the top. Okay. Um, I like to start that this way because I feel like it's then a guide to see how far over each oh. with everything I'd like to go. Um, it also can be helpful to then use this little part to hang if you'd like um, because it is a little bit heavy on this side. Um, but it really is your preference. I do recommend though hiding it with the flowers and leaves okay. as you go along. But that's just my personal preference. Um, so I like to start then grabbing our burgundy flowers. We can actually bring all of our flowers now forward. Oh my gosh. And we're just going to start assembling. Like I said, customize it how you would like. Um, and we're going to look at our wreath as we're doing this just to make sure our placement's correct here. Um, and so we're going to do our burgundy ones here with our large, our small, and our medium on top. Um, so I recommend kind of pinching a little bit on your flower to give it a little bit more of that slimmer look. Okay. Make sure those are all down and held in place. And we're going to, and you can if you'd like how Jen's doing, pull the petals out a little bit to more be more bloomed. Um, but I like my look with it kind of more hugged in closely, a little nestled. Um, and what we're going to do now is we are going to apply glue to the flower itself on the back side and also onto the wreath here. Oh my gosh. We're going to double glue so it's really on there tight. And then I like to set mine a little bit diagonally and place it on there like so. It's like, it looks like, looks like a rose. Yeah, doesn't yeah. Doesn't it? It is like a rose. It's so beautiful. I, I love roses. Me too. Is that too much glue? Nope, that's perfect for this. Really, you can't go wrong with more glue than less glue. Make sure you have something down so that way if any of the glue leaks, um, we're not you know, getting it all over your counter. Um, and we're just going to kind of hold it there for a moment. And if it is a little bit loose at first, that's okay. As you begin to form yes. your wreath, it's gonna start getting more secure. So that's okay. That is okay. Okay. So now I'm going to do my medium one a little bit more up here onto slightly the wreath. Um, so as what I recommend first, actually go backwards a little bit, is laying it down first where you would like it and kind of see based on where you mm. lay it, where you want to apply your glue. We don't want to apply it to the back side of this if we're going to lay it down here. I see that. We want to adhere it to something else on the wreath already. Yeah, so yours is, your, this one's kind of, I don't know, hopefully the overhead camera can see that. So that one's kind of up a little bit and yep. out. Yep, so we have our large one kind of going to the side, our medium one on top here, and our small one at the bottom. Um, Okay. So I'm going to make my medium one. I'll do it a little bit differently this time, but I'm going to apply glue actually to the side of this one. So that way it can adhere to a little bit of my wreath, but also mostly the flower next to it. Oh. So it's really sticking on there. I think I can, should I, uh, maybe I'll put some in the little. And you can add as you go. Like that. Perfect. Uh, guys, I did not know. Chase, Chase was uh, like, hey, we're going to do video. I'm like, I can't wait to watch this. <laughs> no. I did not know I was going to get to participate. She is diving right so, in, doing it step by step uh, with all of you. Chase, thanks for making it possible. Obviously, this was a lot of preparation yes. to have twice as much stuff. My gosh. And then again, with my small one, I know that I'm going to place it just right here on top next to 
my burgundy flowers there. I can see how, yes. So that's kind of mostly glued to the other flowers, mm -hmm. less so to the wreath. And as you go along, you're gonna glue to flowers, you're gonna glue to leaves. Okay. Um, really just your preference okay. of how you'd like to lay it out here. Um, so now that we have our burgundy flowers on here, those look great. And really, it, they can go any direction. Um, we're going to start grabbing some leaves and see kind of based on what size we'd like for the position that we're putting them on. So because this already is, you know, a bigger arrangement of flowers, I think I'm going to go with a smaller leaf first. Oh. And I'm going to put some glue on the leaf here. And I might just glue it in place right here. Just oh. to add, start adding in some leaves. Okay, I'll just grab some leaves. I, I, I guess I thought flowers went down and then the greenery. So it's very much. It's very much, you know, as you go adding as you feel fit. Um, we don't want to add in a lot of it on top of each other. We're more so mixing it in the middle. Because then that just adds a little bit more weight onto one area as opposed to it all staying around the same length as you hang it. So now I'm adding a little bit of a larger wreath, or excuse me, green Large, leaf. Sure. Um, and instead of then placing my leaf now into the flowers, I'm going to actually add one to the side of this hoop wreath here and turn it a different direction oh. and add it to the wreath itself. That's a nice idea. I, okay. All right. I can already see literally no two will look alike. Nope. Nope. The eight, with the same kit. There Oops. we, that's, we should keep track. That's we should. We'll keep two, track. <laughs> not three. <laughs> it's part of the journey. I'm just glad we have our own. If we were having to pass this back and forth. That wouldn't have worked so well, huh? And so then, Perfect, you have your two there. I'm gonna now add one to the bottom here, switching okay. directions, and really just wherever you see fit. Make it your own piece of work um, and customize it to a, however you would like. Every flower, every leaf is different. Um, Boy, that's so true. And that's nature. It is. Right? Um, I'm gonna place this one here around my burgundy. And once I have a few leaves surrounding my burgundy flowers, that's when I'm gonna add in my cream small flower at the bottom here. So I'm gonna take my small flower and I'm going to apply glue kind of all over the bottom here. Nice amount, we'll also put some on the wreath to extra hold that there. And I'm going to place my flower just right there. Oh, wow, so beautiful. I love it. Okay. All right. And so we've placed that small one there and then we're going to grab our medium um, cream flower here and we're going to add it to the top. So again, I am going to cover the bottom and a little bit on the wreath itself and then place it just right here as we did on this other wreath. And I'm right now, I'm just placing my flowers in and I can go back and add some greenery into yes. this area. For now, I'm going to just keep adding the flower bunch here. So now I'm going to take my small flower again on the bottom and onto the wreath itself here and place it just like so. Mm. Onto so there. pretty. After we have that cream one on there, I'm then going to take one of our bunches of our light pink flower, and I'm going to apply it onto this base here because I can see that I'm gonna put it right under these flowers. So some glue on that side would be nice to kind of attach it to these flowers, but then also to make it secure, you can go back in and add some glue where you can see it will be touching on the wreath and just set it down there. You want to be careful when you are gluing this that you aren't um, gluing petal to petal and then mm -hmm. smushing it down. You don't want your flowers to use it, lose its shape. You want it to just be in place. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll add some greenery in there and I'm going to add my pink flower bunches to the bottom of these ones here. So I'm going to again apply to the bottom of my base down here. We're kind of just following along. Again, I'm never going to be able to make it 
an exact replica uh -huh. just because each That's flower okay. was made. But we're doing our best to match it. And then again at the base there, and we're just setting it oh, in place. So pretty. The nice part about hot glue is even though it is, you know, permanent, you can yeah. you can take it off and pull it back yes. on, glue it again if you don't love it in that place, yep. and just really play around with it. So now that I have all of my flowers in place, we're going to continue the video and really just adding in greenery where we see fit. Oh. Um, and kind of just combine our wreath all in one and get it on down to this hoop here. Oh my gosh. Um, so we'll just continue to <laughs> glue okay. and get it all in place. Okay, so we continue to add our greenery here. Um, as you start to get it, you know, kind of formed and in, inside the flowers here, then you're gonna wanna kind of taper downwards and add less and less towards the end to really give it that yeah. nice shape of it flowing outwards. Um, covered that clasp there, you can barely even see it. Um, and then just continue to glue it all together to make sure it's really strong and just forms well. Um, so that way when you hang it on your door, hang it on your window, wherever, it's really yep. just glued nicely. Um, and then you can kind of go through and give it some fluff and add some dimension. Um, and really, I think it turned Aww. out beautiful. I mean, no wreath is the same. It's so very different. We'll show it off here. We have our spring blooms hoop wreath, and it's just lovely. I Aww. really love all the colors flowers coming together it's truly beautiful amazing yes I, I i'm like again i didn't expect this <laughs> and i'm telling you what uh totally doable yes totally doable thanks for oh my gosh thanks for walking us through each one of course some are similar some have that extra little tuck mm -hmm. yep which makes the flower more close yes really those templates uh, are great for just keeping it shape and then just really it comes down to your technique folding and so um, when you're making this wreath, I think it's best to, you know, lay out your pattern, look at the direction step by step, but then really follow along with this tutorial and be, it'll be really helpful for you. Um, thank you, Jen, for being oh. such a great sport today. <laughs> she didn't know what she was getting no, into. No, I didn't. But it really, anyone can make it. Um, and thank you to all of you for watching and following along with us today. It feels so good to have our first video for yep. at home <laughs> out there. Um, so many more to come. And so if you would like to continue following along with Shabby at yeah. home, make sure you go to the description and follow our Instagram at home with Shabby. Also our Pinterest to make sure you don't miss anything. Um, we have lots more fun things in store for all of you. And make sure you also subscribe. Um, to the Shabby Fabrics YouTube channel. Yes. Yes. Well, oh. Thank you so much. Um, and we will see you next time.